Good morning, everyone. Happy July 1st. I can't believe June went by so fast. Oh my goodness. It is early on Saturday morning, July 1st. It's like 7 a.m. I'm out for a morning walk. I have to help my brother and my sister-in-law move today, and then we have a birthday party later on for my mother-in-law. So it's going to be a very busy day, unfortunately. But I just wanted to show you the beautiful sunrise. It's very hazy. We're still getting a lot of that smoke from the Canadian wildfires up in the Quebec, Quebec area, unfortunately, but it still looks really pretty regardless. Um, I have a few books that I'm starting now. I just finished The Wedding Crasher by Mia Sosa, and I have that in my previous vlog, but I am still working on Primitives by Eric Cross loving this book. I just had to put it on hold for a little while while I finished a different book that was due to the library. And I'm also, I also started a few pages of The Subtle Knife, which is a middle grade series. It's part of the Golden Compass, His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman series. So I will be starting that as well as soon as I finish up Primitives. I'm still working on Clarissa, which is on my list of the greatest books of all time. This is by Samuel Richardson, written in like 1786, I think. It's a very old classic, and it is really long. It's at least 1,200 pages, and I've been struggling to get through this. I started this almost two years ago. When I finally make the vlog, it's just going to be funny. But... Um, yeah, I did finally pick that back up. I'm trying to read a little bit each day so that I can get through that. And I am also listening to um, a memoir autobiography by Jeanette McCurdy called I'm Glad My Mom Died. Just started that. I really like that so far. I'm not like really familiar with the actress who played iCarly. I'm a little too old for that series. Um, when it came out, it was geared towards younger kids. So I don't really know her, but I've just heard raving reviews about this book. So those are the books that I have going right now. I did briefly start Cold Mountain by Charles Frazier. I did the audio for that. And although I really liked his voice, it was so calm and he had this slight Southern accent. I really, really liked his voice. The book itself is a, is a bit too litfic for me to pay attention well enough and capture all the, the details. So I'm probably just going to physically read that one when I have time. So those are the books for now and I will check in later. I hope you guys are having a great day today. Okay guys, I'm back from my walk and I am sitting on the porch. Oh, it's a beautiful morning, nice and warm. This is one of my favorite things to do. I try to do it before work every morning. Just give myself a little bit of time to sit and read and relax. And I don't know, it's just the birds chirping and the sun. It's just so nice. I really, really love it. But anyway, back to Clarissa. So this is where I am about at page 689, we're on letter 215. So I think what makes this book a little bit challenging is that it's written in epistolary form, which means it's written as letters to each other. That's how the story is told. So there's like maybe four main characters that the letters go back and forth to, but then a few other characters as well. And it's just very small print. And the language itself is a little bit challenging for me, but I'm still amazed at the amount of storytelling this author has put into this book, the amount of detail and psychological insight. And it's just really mind blowing. I mean, I can see why it definitely has made one of the 100 greatest novels of all time. This is number 100. Um, it might be further up the list in different lists, but the one I'm looking at has it at 100. So yeah, it's, um, you know, I'm enjoying it. It's just hard <laughs> to get through a ton of it at a time. I'm going to read maybe a letter or two this morning, and then I'm going to switch over to Primitives, which is on my Kindle there. I also got, I've been having a lot of shoulder pain. Um, I've had it chronically for a long time, like ever since I had kids, but it's gotten worse the past year or so. Um, I'm, I have a feeling it is like an impingement in the muscle or nerve. So I heard some really good reviews about this book. I'm hoping it'll give me some some exercises to do that might really help. I don't think it's a rotator cuff issue, but 
it's just driving me crazy. Like it hurts all the time. It hurts with any kind of rotation and, um, you know, I don't know. I'm just hoping that it helps. Hey guys, so as I'm editing this video, I wanted to insert this clip because I realized I never really talked about this book or what it was about, but this is Primitives by Eric Cross. So this book is sci-fi and it's kind of like this post-apocalyptic real world sort of scenario where the premise is, is that there was this virus that mutated and essentially became airborne and extremely untreatable. There was no cure for it and it ended up infecting people. It was a common virus like cat scratch fever or maybe like malaria, something like that, but it mutated into this highly transmittable virus that's airborne that infected the entire world in a very short time. So these scientists, um, some of the symptoms were extreme debilitating fatigue that you couldn't Move, barely even move after a couple of days. So a few scientists got together and developed this vaccine called Advitalon, which was handed out to you know the mass public. They took it and everyone got better. So within about 18 months, people started noticing huge side effects from this vaccine. Mainly, the, the, major, the major side effect was that it began affecting people's brains and shutting down certain parts of their brains, sort of de-evolving them back to a very primitive state of humanness. So people could no longer talk. They no longer knew or could think about like relationships or community. They didn't know how to take care of themselves. They became really like animals, basically, not even as evolved as like dogs or apes. They became almost less involved, not like zombies, but they didn't know how to build a fire anymore. They didn't know how to use tools. They didn't know how to think for themselves. They really just operated at this really low baseline level. So the people that didn't end up taking the vaccine um, were spared this. And, you know, I know I, I can see how this could be looked at as a little bit like an anti-vaccine book. But to me, that wasn't really part that wasn't like a huge focus of the story the focus of the story is that we're following these two young adults named seth and sarah they have totally different lives on different parts of the world seth lives in utah with this professor who is basically his adopted father who found him when he was a baby his parents were killed we don't know if they had turned they weren't um they didn't take the vaccine so they weren't like these primitive people but something happened to them and he adopted him and he raised him as his own and he had Seth going out into the woods, um, in the desert, I should say, the, the desert, to capture these primitive people who are now living scattered around the world in these little groups or tribes with usually one alpha person. So Seth would capture these people and bring them back to his dad slash professor who would perform experiments on them because he was trying to find a cure, trying to find a way to fix this huge devastating mess that the entire world is now in. So Sarah's storyline, she lives in this little tiny community of people that never took the vaccine. And it's basically run by this other professor who um, kind of has things really like a well-oiled machine. He has, it's like this dystopian society where everybody has their role, everybody has a job, there's arranged marriages, they're trying to increase the population again. And she's what's called a forager. So she goes out into the jungle every day and she collects plants for medicinal purposes and testing and things like that. So she wants to get out of this place. She lost both her parents. Her mom died during childbirth and her father recently had passed away. So she feels very alone. She's supposed to be paired up with this person that she doesn't know who it's gonna be yet. So she develops this scheme to break into the this other professor, kind of like he's like the governor of their little community in Costa Rica. And to she needs to steal the ingredients so she can make her own infusion. So basically the people that didn't take the vaccine that ended up with this huge virus, which they now call the great fatigue, they have to take an infusion every day, which gives them energy again. So the infusion is called NDE or something like that. And if they don't take it within a few days, this fatigue settles over them and they can barely function. So she wants to escape, but she knows she needs to get this infusion, like a huge supply of it so that she can survive, you know. 
So Sarah ends up, so Sarah ends up going on her mission to try to steal this, these chemicals from the lab and she gets caught. And what she finds in this lab is horrifying. It's uh, questions everything she ever thought she believed about what was going on in the world. And she gets kidnapped, basically. She gets caught and kidnapped and thrown into this other separate mission that she had no idea was even going on. It's really, really good. It's really high paced. The characters are so fleshed out. They're so likable. And the overall premise is really interesting to me. So, so far, absolutely loving Primitives. So I did end up purchasing a copy. But I, yeah, I just wanted to pop in and give you a little bit of idea of what the premise is. So that way you know what I'm talking about later on in the vlog. Every summer there's a few days where this hay field out back that I always show you guys um, becomes like flooded with these gorgeous purple flowers and a lot of people you know refer to them as weeds but they're so beautiful and it's kind of hard to capture in the video how beautiful they are and the light is really bright because it's early in the morning but I'll try to get a shot at some point where you can see them better but I always just love seeing that this field filled with these beautiful purple flowers after the first cutting of hay that they seem to grow but yeah it's so beautiful i just want to show you guys real quick okay guys so i am almost done with primitives i am 97 percent there and I really hope there's a sequel because because I feel like it hasn't wrapped up yet for me. Um, I didn't hear that this was a, I, I assumed this was a standalone book, but hopefully it's a sequel. But oh my gosh, I loved this book. It was so good. It is so good. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the last little bit and hope that there's a sequel. Yay, thank goodness. I'm so glad it did not end the way it ended. So at the end of the book Primitives, there's an author's note, and it is so moving because this author was a world traveler. He taught survival classes. He lived in India. He lived within a tribe in India. He um, had like extensive experiences in where both places that the book is set in Utah and Costa Rica, which are the locations, the main settings for the book. And he he came down with Lyme disease at one point and. It took over his life and he felt horrible and he did all this research into immunology and he was able to, through the research from long COVID and what has helped people recover from that, he was able to find some medications to really help him and he got his physical life back. So all the proceeds from this book, as it says right here, will be donated to research projects devoted to unraveling the immunological overstimulation called by Lyme, caused by Lyme. I think that is so amazing. I just wanted to point that out. I just finished the book. It was absolutely amazing. Five stars. Probably one of my favorite books I've read this whole year. It was just so good. It was such a good combination of character development and action and plot. And I am so excited for the next book to come out really loved it guys oh i loved it so much now i have to go to work but yeah i just wanted to um touch base on that super good book hi so 
Looking a little stormy out there. We're supposed to go camping <laughs> right after work. It's Friday. I have a couple more hours to work. And yeah, looks like it's going to be another rainy camping time, but that's okay. I don't think it's supposed to rain tomorrow, luckily. These flowers are so pretty. They started blooming this week. Um, it's like a vine style. I haven't done anything with my little flower beds, really. Just haven't had time. But we also have this black raspberry bush that just came up out of nowhere. And I don't like cutting it down because we love eating them. They're like coming right onto the porch, but they're so good. Oh my gosh. I send my 11 year old out every day to pick berries and she loves to do it but they're so good. Here is our little camper in the dark. We, had, we got this really cool outdoor light up road from Camping World. <laughs> It's so fun. So I think when I go inside, I'm just going to do a little reading before bed. I think that it's probably easier to read on my Kindle. So I'm going to start back up with The Subtle Knife, which is the second book in his Dark Materials series, which starts with The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. But yeah, the other two books that I brought with me are the second book in that High Republic Star Wars series, which is called Rise of the Storm. And then I also brought a book that I got from the library called Soul Mountain. So I'm not sure which ones I'll pick up tomorrow. But it is so warm. The sun is setting. It's like 930 at night. This is a really nice campground. It's so quiet and peaceful and there's birds everywhere. So hopefully tomorrow will be a little better of a day with no rain. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. And it's our first morning at our campsite and it's a little overcast. Can't tell if it's gonna rain or not, <laughs> but we're hoping to hit a couple of the trails. I know this is a, there's a good bike trail at this campground. And yeah, unfortunately there's no pool or lake or body of water we can swim in and it's really, really hot and humid, but hopefully we'll find enough to do today. As for reading, these are the books that I brought with me. I want to start the fourth book in the J.D. Robb in Death series. So this is Rapture and Death. And this is the book I got out from the library called Soul Mountain by Go Xinjiang. I'm sure I didn't say that right. And I, I started this last night a little bit, but I'm not sure how I feel because it's told in that you perspective. It's like, like for example, but right now you've lots of time, although your backpack's a nuisance. As you amble along the road, timber trucks go by noisily, sounding their horns. So that present type of tense, I'm not a huge fan of. It does work sometimes if it's done like a little bit. I do see in the next chapter though, it goes back to the eye point of view. So I'm gonna keep going with it to see if I like it. And then I also have, um, <clears throat> I also have, what do I have on my Kindle? Oh, I have His Dark Materials book number two called The Subtle Knife on my Kindle, which I can try to get into as well. So that's the reading wrap up. And I think we're gonna try to find the bike path now and go for a bike ride. Um, that doesn't look good.
Okay, so I just wanted to share with you guys a really quick little haul I got. These are a bunch of books that I have found recently this month in those free little book libraries. I have a couple near me and they just happen to finally have some like fun books that I was interested in reading. A lot of these are, these are classics, but um, the first one I found is Third Girl by Agatha Christie. This is one in a series that she did with the um, Hercule Poirot series detective series so this is called third girl i'm doing a reading project right now where i want to read all the agatha christie's books so every time i see one in the wild i always grab a copy of that this i think i found in one of the little free libraries while we were camping um this past weekend then i also found a jody p cult novel called my sister's keeper this is a really really popular book i felt feel like i've seen it everywhere a while ago i can't remember when it came out but I recently read my very first Jodi Picoult called Mad Honey, which I really liked. So this is definitely an author that I'm going to pick up anytime I see her in the wild. And this was also from a free library um, near this little ice cream place that we go to. Next, I found a children or middle grade or YA classic. I'm not sure what that what the age group is for this, but it's called My Side of the Mountain by Jean Craighead George. And I... This is a really pretty Puffin Modern Classics edition. And I remember watching this movie with my dad when I was young. And I was so intrigued by this kid that was like surviving in the wilderness by himself. So I think that was the movie. But yeah, it's really short. Um, I always love reading children's classics and middle grade and YA. So definitely grabbed that. Then in the same camping free library, somebody who reads classics dropped off a bunch of stuff, which is cool. But I found a Penguin Library edition of Much Ado About Nothing, edited by Peter Holland, of course, by Shakespeare. This is a play. Um, Shakespeare's on my list. It has an introduction and lots of notes on it. So I always love to find these. I love finding books that people have read before and added their own notations. I just think that's really fun. I love that. So also in that camping free library was No Fear Shakespeare Hamlet. And this is a way you can read um, these plays where it'll do the original text on one side and then it'll kind of explain what they're talking about in the other side. So I thought that was really cool. So I found two Shakespeare books in this uh, camping free library. Also in the camping free library, I found The Yellow Wallpaper and Other Stories by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. I did read The Yellow Wallpaper um, last year. Actually, I listened to it as an audiobook, which I really recommend. It was really good. But I really loved that story. It was so haunting and creepy, and um, it's really short. I would be interested in checking out some of her other stories as well. Also in this free library, I found the Essential Homer, translated in edition and edited by Stanley Lombard, Lombardo. And this just has like notes and excerpts from the Iliad and the Odyssey. So I thought that would be pretty cool. I haven't read either of them and I thought it'd be really cool. Nice, like almost brand new, these books were edition. So yeah, I mean, obviously I want to read the Iliad and the Odyssey first, but that's, I think if I'm interested would be a really cool, you know, in-depth look. And then I also found a Char Charles Dickens book, A Tale of Two Cities in this um, signature classics edition, hard copy edition. I think I have this book in a bind up with great expectations, but I know that I do want to get a um, more collectible copy of Great Expectations someday. So that's why I wanted to pick up A Tale of Two Cities. It's really a nice, like, easy to keep open book, which I like. I love that about certain hard copies. So yeah, that's my quick little classics haul, mostly all classics. Um, it's always exciting to find books in the wild, especially when they're in such nice condition. I really love that people donate their books. You know, it just keeps them circulating through and it keeps reading really accessible for everybody. So, yep, that was my quick haul. I just wanted to share that with you guys. And please let me know if you guys have any good like free libraries or thrift shops or flea markets that you find books in or if you really like to go to bookshops and purchase books. I mean, I like to do both, but I really limit my book buying to my birthday or special occasions just because... Um, 
you know, just trying to save a little money that way when there's so many amazing free copies around and used copies. Hey guys, so as I'm editing my video, I realized I didn't film an outro yet. So I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. We're going on vacation in a couple days up to the Adirondack Mountains. So I'm hoping I'll have more time to read. But I did have a pretty good first start to the month. Um, I really enjoyed the books I read so far. So again, I will pick up where I left off in my next vlog and catch you up on what I've been reading and listening to. And thank you again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and take good care.